There's something called Munchausen's trilemma. Whilst it first appears to be an academic exercise or a thought experiment, it does have some real world consequences, especially when it comes to resolving differences of opinions between two people on a contentious subject. Now the Munchausen reference is to a humorous fictional character who himself was involved in many barely believable stories where the truth was either stretched to an unbelievable level or just entirely absent. One such story was that he was riding his horse and became stuck in a mire or a swamp. He was able to lift himself and the horse out by pulling his hair upwards and bringing the rest of him up and the horse upwards as well. Now this of course is physically impossible, but it brings us into the question, how do we know what is true and what is untrue? And whilst proving something is untrue can be relatively easy, proving that something is true isn't as easy as it may first seem. The trilemma proposes that there are three ways to prove something is true, and they each have their own problems. Now the first is a circular argument, or circular reasoning, where one piece of supposed evidence is based upon another, which in turn is based on the original evidence. An example from earlier in our history was that only intelligent people can learn Latin. Women don't know Latin, and therefore are not intelligent. Because women are not intelligent, there's no point in teaching them Latin. Now, it should be fairly obvious to see the flaws in this particular circular argument, but the flaws in a circular argument are not always as obvious as this example. Next is the use of a regressive argument, where one item relies upon another and continuing in a loop. This classic example is where someone was describing the Earth as being supported on the back of a turtle. In challenge as to what the turtle was standing on, the person said it was standing on the back of another turtle. This continued all the way down. The third method of argument is what's known as an axiomatic argument. Here is where it starts to get interesting. Here the proof of the argument relies generally upon a more basic idea or reasoning. So, say, seeking the truth out behind what causes earthquakes, to lead you to saying the result of continental drift. Okay, and what causes continental drift? Well, that's right, being driven by rising pockets of magma coming deep within the earth. Okay, so what causes magma to rise? Well, when magma is heated, it expands and becomes less dense than the surrounding material, and therefore it rises upwards towards the surface of the earth. Okay, what causes the magma to become heated? And so the questions go on and on and on. Each explanation relies upon another explanation. So theoretically, it's impossible to prove that something is being true. And so you, to do this, you have to prove each supporting layer of the subject in question is also true, that it's resting upon. So unless you can agree on some fundamental basic precepts or principles, the explanations have the potential to become infinite. That's the thought experiment takes us. However, there are some real world uses for this. When you're trying to explain something, say, like to a child who's often asking those difficult series of why questions, or alternatively, someone who has less knowledge on a specific topic under discussion than you do, the key to making yourself understood is to start at the first point where you both understand and agree on a basic principle or precept and work up from there. If you start from two or three principles ahead, where the basic understanding is, and the gap between you and them is normally too far for them to bridge. So especially so when a subject under discussion is contentious or one where you disagree about its implications. You can, can't explain the stages you go through from your mutual point of agreement to you get to your final point of disagreement and you have no hope of persuading the person of the validity of your argument. And that's where Munchausen's trilemma is actually practically applicable.